what is up you guys so on this one we're going to see some really interesting stuff about deep learning so this tutorial is going to show you how to perform deep learning in just one line of code thanks to this python package called libra so it's a fully automated machine learning package for one liners that is it automates end-to-end -end machine learning processes in just one line of code. It's mainly targeted for both non-technical and software professional users all at once. So if you're maybe just a manager or you run a company and you'd like to do some scientific study on your, I don't know, maybe your profits or your business and you have no background on machine learning or deep learning, then this package is for you. You can just go ahead and follow the steps that I'm going to show you to get your machine ready for using Libra that enables you to run deep learning in just one line of code. So without further ado, let's open our terminal. So terminal, here's my terminal. And you can just go to any path you want so I am right now in my desktop. Just do a directory, call it trying out Libra. CD into that folder. Now, if you don't have Libra on your machine, all you have to do is run this command right here. So I'm going to run a pip3 install Libra. Since I have it, then I'm good to go. And if you don't have it, just wait a moment and let this package download, okay? Next, I'm going to work on Jupyter Notebook. So running that, I've got Jupyter right now. And as you can see, the folder is empty. Well, let's create a new notebook, call it Trying Libra, okay? So the first thing you want to do is, you know, import Libra and in particular from Libra, we need the client, right? It's running right now, give it some time and there you go. So now let's do a case study. Let's say I'm a construction company and my main interest is to estimate different information about a new house that I'm building, right? Now, let's say you've got some data that you want to analyze. For the moment, let's say I've got the California housing data set. So it could be found on this link on Kaggle. So it's right here, right? This is our data set, but you can't download it unless you register, right? So since I have it, I'm not going to log in right here and download it again. I'm just going to copy paste it to my directory. So this is my folder, trying out Libra, and I'll just paste it over there, okay? Now, let's go back to Jupyter. And the first thing you'd want to do before doing deep learning is importing this data set into your environment so keep in mind that a new client object should be created for every data set that you're working with so the way to do this is let's call a client that is a client and pass it the name of the data set that is my housing.csv right let it run and as you notice you'll see a process logger below documenting what libra is doing behind the scenes, right? So it just read the data set. So before we build a neural network, we're going to take a look at how my data set looks like, right? For that, I always prefer to use pandas because it's the easiest thing to, you know, read an Excel file or a CSV file. So I'm going to call data that is pd.read csv right and i'll pass it housing csv there you go and finally i'm going to take a look at the head of my data and there you go this is how the first five rows of your data set looks like you've got longitude latitude housing median age so a lot of good information right about this housing data set let's take a look at more data so yeah this is how the data set looks like. So now let's go ahead and build a neural network 
to estimate the proximity to the ocean based on ocean underscore proximity. So all I have to do is call my client the neural network query and pass it a message saying estimating ocean proximity, right? Pass it the number of epochs, right? Let's say 10 and run. There you go. So what you see here is some information about each and every layer of this neural network giving us training accuracy and test accuracy. I'm not going to talk about training and test accuracy, but keep in mind as a newcomer or as a newbie in neural networks, this accuracy is a measure of how good, it's not the only measure, it's, all not, it's not the only metric, but it's a basic metric that tells you how good your model is. So here you see that with increasing number of epochs, we're increasing our model accuracy on both the training and test data sets, which is a good thing. Also, you see the model loss. So this reflects or tells you how much error you have in your model in estimating. So you can see that with increasing number of epochs, the training and test loss or error decreases with increasing number of epochs, okay? Now, let's see if we can generate some more insightful information about my model for ocean proximity. So the way you do this is just call your client.analyze as such. And as you see over here, you've got some pretty good information about this neural network. That is, you've got more metrics reporting What's going on so you've got the accuracy you've got the recall precision f1 score all these metrics are discussed in a lecture of my series entitled machine learning with tensorflow and scikit-learn and in particular in the lecture on performance measures if you want to know more about those metrics i'll leave the link of the lecture down in the description section below so back over here you can see some rock curves as well receiver operation curves telling you more information or more. So the benchmark, or if you want the curve to compare with is this straight line. So the farther away you are from this line, the better. As you can see, we have an area of 0.97 at the red curve, which means we did a pretty good job. And over here, we've got the confusion matrix telling us more about errors and in particular true positives and false negatives and so forth perfect now it's time to see what we've created right since i just called the neural network query i don't have to refer to it anymore so all i have to do is just call my object or my client in terms of libra and just you know say what i want let's say i want to know what the accuracy is and there you go See a bunch of accuracy measures over here, whether it's on the training set or the testing or validation set. You also could take a look at the losses. So dot losses, there you go, for both the training and testing sets. Also, you can print info. So it returns a dictionary telling you what measures you can take a look at or what stuff you can take a look at. Now, let's say I want some more information about my housing district. So let's build another neural network to estimate the median house value given information about my house. So for that, go ahead, a client.neural network. Notice that it's the same client, but I'm going to pass it another message. That's how we differentiate between the neural networks. So let's say model the median house value right say what i want to target so ocean underscore proximity and let's pass save model to true in case you want to save your model in your folder so run this and as you can see it's taking a bit of time because there's a lot of training going on or a lot of learning going on it's still running even though you see some messages but we've got an initial message saying that for number of layers equal to three, you've got a training loss of 0 0.229 roughly and test loss 0 
That's for the training set. Now for the testing set, we've got a bit higher loss, 0 0.23. Still running, give it some time. Now with four layers and now with five. And there you go. So it's done. You've got some preliminary information, training loss, test loss, got the number of layers or the best number of layers found that is five because the loss decreases till 0 0.22 and then it increases. So I think five is based upon this choice on the loss. Know that this is one type of criterion. Other criteria exist for choosing the best number of layers. You've also got a plot here showing you that the loss decreases with increasing number of epochs. Okay, so that's it. As you can see, we did two neural networks with just two lines of code, right? Of course, excluding this and importing the data set, which don't count. You can see we only needed the neural network query method of client to perform deep learning, right? And also Libra provides us with other useful functionalities such as analyze to get deeper insights of how good my model is, such as looking at rock curves or even the confusion matrix. You can also take a look at the accuracy, losses, scores, and other key deep learning metrics. So thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was beneficial. If you found it beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also consider contributing to my Patreon account any amount you wish. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in future lectures.